you know, I, I, I just realized what I said in my introduction wasn't flattering, and I didn't mean it that way. It's you, of your own free will and volition early in the 70s, stopped doing this. I mean, you went off to your farm somewhere and stared at the trees or whatever. What was going through your mind at that time? Well, actually, in 1970, the Shandells and I broke up. Yeah. And, uh, we now, had, let me back up, because okay. there are some kids here, there, we've got some young kids who don't remember the Shondells. That was okay. a group that you put together when you were a kid. That's right. That's exactly right. And You had a record called Hanky Panky. Now, I remember it was 1965. Now, some of these people were born in 1965. <laughs> that escaped. I mean, it didn't happen, I right? Know. It was wild, because I actually had recorded it when I was 13 years old wow. in 1961. And it happened totally by accident in 1965, late 1965, out of Pittsburgh. Well, let, let, me, let me recap ever so briefly. Following that, hit after hit after hit, travel all over the world. I told you about the millions of records, and then all of a sudden you said, that's it, I quit. Yeah, I, uh, I felt that uh, by 1970, uh, the Shondells and I really had, you know, we'd done the Ed Sullivan shows, and we did the Houston Astrodomes, and we did the uh, rock festivals, and we were really tired. I mean, mentally, physically, spiritually, we were gone. And uh, so one day we just looked at each other and we said, hey, you know, this is, we got it, we got to take a rest. So I went up to my farm, I bought a farm in Upper State, New York, and about 3,000 acres of land and just stared at walls for about six months. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally I just decided that I was going to get back into the business and then we had Dragon a Line and I'm Coming Home and a few other records I, as a solo artist. What's the biggest record you ever had? Was it Crimson and Clover? Crimson and Clover was uh, to date. And we still sell another 100,000 records every year. Uh, it's, to date, it's uh, just under 6 million copies of the single. Ooh, that's a lovely thing to yeah, have happen to you in your it's life. A, it's a classic. Because How'd this happen? I mean, this current sound. You back with somebody you worked with before? Yeah, I, well, no. Actually, I've got to take that back because the, uh, uh, what happened, I just sat my guitar player down and my drummer down, and I said, look, guys, we're going to write songs. And we're going into the studio, and we're not coming out till, uh, till uh, we feel we have uh, what we're going after. And uh, the first song we wrote, um, we, we had some very, very, very intense conversations with the man upstairs. And the first song we wrote was Three Times in Love. By the time this show will air, that'll be in the top ten everywhere. Let's do another song from the album. Okay, fine. What's it called? Well, this is not from the album. We're going to do Crystal Blue Persuasion. Oh, I could love it. Oh. There you are, sir. Let me take the. You want to sit down or stand up? I never asked. Ladies and gentlemen, again, Mr. Tommy James.